Dr. Centeno, and today we're going to review the Invitrix Cord Blood Product. Uh, this is a white paper, and it's pretty much more of the same. So, first off, this is an FDA 361 registered tissue and not an FDA approved cell drug product. So, just realize that as a tissue, there's some strict rules as to what this company can say about its product. In particular, it cannot say that there are any live cells. In fact, if it does, then there's a product claim for this being a cell drug. I'm gonna show you that there probably aren't many live cells here, but the company by claiming this is marketing an illegal drug product. So let's just jump into the Invitrix data. First, we see a simple live dead stain with 75% viability. So realize the problem with that viability data is it places healthy and dying cells into the exact same category. So we have no idea what we're dealing with here. And recognize that normal recovery rates out of cryopreservation for cells that are properly handled are 90% plus. So seeing a 75% recovery tells you that there are issues. Basically that these cells have been through heck and back. Next comes the flow cytometry. If you really want to confuse a doctor, throw flow cytometry at them and see what happens. So what you read in the white paper is the fine print and what does the fine print say here boys and girls which may be indicative of the presence of stem cells and other immune cells uh, the may be part here is the part to pay attention to so for example we know that in cord blood we wouldn't really expect to find any viable or many viable mesenchymal stem cells which is what's trying to be identified here based on th these three different papers. And the folks that did this white paper reference this paper, which is the standard paper to identify mesenchymal stem cells. And to identify a mesenchymal stem cell, you need those three markers to be on the cell and all of these markers not to be on the cell. You also need to show that the cells are plastic adherent in culture and the cells have to be able to try lineage differentiate. So what did the flow cytometry find in the Invitrix white paper? Well, regrettably, they didn't find mesenchymal stem cells. As you can see, two of the three markers that should be there weren't even tested for. And many of the things that were supposed to be missing weren't tested for. In fact, CD14 or CD11. Their MSCs had an HLA ABC marker and a lot of things have this same marker. They also had an HLA DR marker and it's a common T cell receptor. So their MSCs didn't have much CD34 and CD45 and the CD34 marker is for hematopoietic stem cells uh, and the other is a lymphocyte common antigen so basically note that 61% of the cells they identified were white blood cells. So what they didn't do was to identify mesenchymal stem cells. So the Invitrix white paper in conclusion also didn't show that these cells were plastic adherent in culture, which they needed to. Also didn't show that these cells could trilineage differentiate. And the only cells that were identified were hematopoietic stem cells, but there were very, very few of these. In fact, there were only about 1.3 million in the sample that they tested. And in fact, the average adult bone marrow sample has about 25 million hematopoietic stem cells.
So in conclusion, the viability rates are poor. The white paper makes no serious attempt to determine if these cells are functionally viable. The flow cytometry doesn't have the ability to ID a mesenchymal stem cell because they did it wrong, certainly not in accordance with the paper that they referenced. And the number of hematopoietic stem cells identified are about 20% less than adult bone marrow. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.